Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to Work Trends with Megan and Biro. Whether you're here to network, learn, or share, we want you to have fun. During this live broadcast and Twitter chat, we'll discuss the future of work with smart and entertaining guests who value today's business and its impact on the world of work for the future. Stay tuned, because we start in 3, 2, 1... I'm doing that. I'm doing that really cheesy um, snap again, everybody. Oh, my God. I'm, like, so scared of that intro. Will somebody please inspire me to get a new one? It's, it's coming down the pike. I'm warning everybody. Um, I still got a kick out of it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Gravitas is our topic today. Do you have it? Welcome, everybody. Come on in. Utilize the hashtag work trends. I'd love to hear from you on this topic today, hanging out at the home office in Cambridge, and somebody has got to send me some sunshine. This is, like, totally redonkulous. It's been, like, 50 degrees and cloudy, and i got, and I got issues with it. So somebody send me something, would you? Throw me, a, throw me a bone. All right. Well, listen, thanks to everybody, my friends and sponsors who make all this possible every week. Uh, today's topic is one that we have not actually discussed before, although today's special guest was here about a year ago, a year and plus ago. So I'm really excited to kind of dig into it with uh, her today. Um, so what do you think? What do you think when you hear the word gra And I like to say gravitas because it's just so dramatic, right? Would you believe it's something that's been around since the early Roman days and is considered a very important important part of someone's persona. Yes, I just used the word persona in their culture. And I've got air quotes, too, if you want. So we're very fortunate to have someone here with us today to help us better understand this word, what it is, and more than that, determine if you have it, and if not, how are you going to get it? So uh, without further ado, let me introduce my friend, Deborah Thomas. Nininger, and I probably just botched her last name, and she's gonna she's gonna um, call me out a little bit. We'll have some fun with that. She's the founder of DTN Productions International. They're a company that provides professional development training on all areas of international and domestic protocol, specializing in reputation management and communication strategies. She brings you over 20 years of business etiquette, communication, self presentation expertise, all kind of rooted in data and science, which I think is really cool. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here, and hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Well, you and I, you have had, like, an amazing career. Uh, Like, I just think about it, and I'm like, wow. We could just spend the whole 30 minutes a day talking about your different clients and your travels. You are such a jet setter. You and I were just chatting in the green room, um, I go to Vegas, but not as often as you go to Vegas. And we were talking about um, our favorite hotel there, which is uh, the Wynn, right? That's one of my favorite spots to hang when I'm there. Tell us a little bit more about your adventures these days. And tell us what's changed well, with the Wynn. I think they're one of your clients. It's kind of fancy. Yes, they are. I am very honored to say that, that I have been training in the soft skills arena for the Win Encore since it opened, so quite a few years now. And as a matter of fact, I have launched the Gravitas program for them, and I'm even coaching a variety of people there now on this topic. Really? It's exciting because I I get a little bit of the inside scoop. They share things with me, such as, and this is not really secret news because Mr. Steve Wynn himself has been talking about this and sharing this publicly that they are building, they are adding on. So there will be a new hotel with the Wynn and the Encore and convention space, oh, nice. but also a yeah. fabulous lagoon with a coral reef where you will be Uh-oh. able to scuba dive, parasail, zip line. So, yes, it zip is going line. to be nothing short huh? of awesome. Yes. Yes, I, I so. tell you, I do. I love, I love those hotels. Every single time I'm there, my friends are like, "Why are you all the way at the end and we're at the other end?" And I'm like, "Because look, look at all this in the spa. 
Oh my god, oh, that spa awesome. is outrageous. By the way, love it, mm-hmm. love it. I know, it is. I know. So well, but again, when like, you think of gravitas. You know, he has, he has yeah. it. Steve Wynn has gravitas. Oh, he is absolutely. the real deal. Well, you know, you, you may or may not know this, and your audience may or may not know, but Steve Wynn is the one who designed the Blasio. That was his. Oh, I know. And so, oh, yeah. and so then after the Blasio, then he went on to design and build even more. So, so yes, he definitely has become Mr. Vegas without any exception there. And he is taken very seriously, which is what Gravitas is all about. People take you seriously. Well, what, what is Gravitas? I mean, tell us just a little bit more about this word. Well, I designed the program to add to my portfolio of soft skills last year. And it was during the Ahem, ahem, election time frame, which Uh-oh. we will not be discussing politics. Really? But I kept hearing sure? people, well, maybe a little, uh, people <laughs> would attribute certain people as having gravitas during the election. And so the newscasters, the journalists well, were talking we were about just, it. We're, and we and are I, going there. We're going there. We're going there. <laughs> we have no choice. So it was one of no, we have. I opened the door, didn't I? And so yes, I'm sitting did. back and I'm thinking, uh, wait a minute. To have gravitas, there are a variety of things that factor into it. You just can't throw that word out there and think it's going to stick on anyone, because gravitas, frankly, is something that people bestow on you. You have to develop it yourself. But then people would say, Megan has gravitas. So it is something that people notice in you. Are you sure about that? You. <laughs> you, well, of course. Are you sure about that? Of course I am. All but, right. Uh, I so think yes. you stowed gravitas today. My world is is looking up today. You know that? See, look at the she gone. I know, exactly. <laughs> so, like, how do I go about, Megan M. Bureau here, how do I go about discovering if I have it and what it is? Like, does it come from me first and then I share it with the world, or does the world get to decide it? Well, it does come from each of us internally. And because, as you brought up the Romans, it was considered one of the four pillars of character that if you wanted to be perceived as someone who was a leader, someone who had influence, you had to have gravitas. And gravitas, it's rooted in that Latin word grave, so it has to do with being taken very seriously. In other words, you are someone who people know you can be counted on. You mean what you say. You deliver. You're not someone Mm -hmm. who's all smoke and mirrors. You're not fake. You're not disingenuous. So people count on you. I can be down with that. I like that. Can I have fun and have a sense of humor, though, and still have it? Oh, absolutely. That's my rule. All right. Yes. Just checking. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> you you definitely want to have some humor because people without humor are just no fun to be around. But for instance, especially when you're in Vegas, Vegas, right? I mean, I can <laughs> yeah. imagine you and I in Vegas. That'd be kind of dangerous, maybe you know. Well, maybe we should uh, think about scheduling that because really? I, I can certainly I can hook you up out there. So yeah, <laughs> no kidding. But I may be taking you up yeah. on that, my friend. All right. Well, you know how to reach me. Mm-hmm. So it's, it is uh, with with Gravitas, yes. You have humor. In fact, a person with Gravitas doesn't take themselves so seriously that they don't enjoy people, that they don't enjoy the benefits of all that they've worked for. So I don't want the audience to think that you have to be so somber and serious that you're no fun. But the person with Gravitas will never make fun of anyone else. They don't poke fun. Uh They're not mean-spirited. They don't throw people under the bus. So the person with gravitas definitely is fun to be around, but if they're going to poke fun, they poke fun at themselves. Got it. How does body language play into all this? You know, we're all spending time in person, on video, on different platforms now in the media space? Well, this is a little bit interesting because for people to do that, 
self-discovery to determine if they themselves have it. It begins with just ask yourself, do people respond to your emails? Do they cut you off when you're talking? Do they dismiss you as though your opinion does not count? Do they bypass you? Do they go over your head? Those are all uh-huh. signals that you don't have gravitas because people uh-huh. are not taking you seriously. So when you're taken seriously and if you possess it, you have a certain presence about you. You exhibit also patience with others. You have a higher level of civility, more courtesy with others, and it just seems to emanate from you in a very seamless, effortless way. So in other words, you have composure. People look at Uh you as that foundation. They could be losing it. They're losing their cool. But they look at you, and you actually give them the confidence to keep forging ahead, trudging forward. So you really are the foundation that people often count on. So it sounds to me like gravitas takes time and effort for people to develop. You actually have to, like, do something. What is a good plan of action to begin one's quest towards obtaining a a stellar either personal brand, a corporate brand, or representation, right, or reputation, because that's another thing I know you you travel the world thinking about is, is reputation management. How does this all come into play right now, and are you, you know, are you dealing with personal brands mainly or corporate brands or a little bit of both? So I sprinkling in a ton of questions for you there. I'd love to hear more about it. Well, since you mentioned reputation management, and thank you for that, I have the top 10 things that a person needs to possess as part of their reputation if they want to stand out from the crowd. But this, again, going back to your comment, this requires work. And as part of the top 10, gravitas is in the top 10. It is something that requires time to develop. And as you were asking about the body language, when a person has a congruent message, their words will match what their body language is saying. Because if people have to choose between your body language and your words, they go with your body language because body language does not lie. And so a person with gravitas has body language that is transparent, but it is certainly going to be body language that doesn't act frenetic, doesn't act as though they're losing their cool in the moment, The person with gravitas is able to keep that body language of composure. They show more respect with their body language, the eye contact, the head nods, the engaging body language that says, Mm -hmm. you have my full attention. So in other words, I'm going down this road with you, Trump. Sounds like we might have a disconnect with him and gravitas. Because I know there's been several times when... You know, I'm watching him, and what he's saying does not match his body language. Like, literally on a consistent, kind of a consistent basis, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yes, because you cannot say one thing and think that people are going to automatically believe it when they are able to view you. If people can only hear you, that's a different story. But when people see you at the same time you are speaking certain words, they will notice if there is a disconnect between your body language and your spoken word. And because body language does not lie, it is more honest than the spoken word. People innately, without even knowing they're doing it, they follow the path of believing your body language before they trust your words. All right, so let's play a little game. Let's play name two or three people. They could be notable or not notable. It's up to you. Who you think has gravitas, and how do they present themselves in a way that says they have it? And hopefully we get a little wi- a wide spectrum from you on examples. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. All right. Well, some of my favorite people to mention, and I'm going to try to do this in a non-political manner, but these are people that regardless of a person's political persuasion, they have gravitas. For instance, Michelle Obama. 
without a yeah. doubt, strong. Yeah, she's you could tell she believed with her heart, mm-hmm. believed everything yeah. she says. So her body language and her word completely in harmony, followed by she backs it up with action. So Michelle mm-hmm. Obama would be one. And then I'm going to mention someone we don't hear a lot of in the news in the, anymore, but first female Secretary of State, Madeline mm-hmm. Albright. Now, she oh. had to have gravitas because here she was, a woman traveling the world, representing the United States, dealing with cultures that do not respect women in positions of power. And she did mm-hmm. tremendously well. Yeah. And then she set so that's she true. set the tone for uh, Condoleezza Rice, who was the second female Secretary of State, but the first mm-hmm. African American female Secretary of State. So oh, cool. again, another yeah, woman. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to throw someone in that might surprise you, George Clooney. Because George, George Clooney, I'm not surprised. No, I'm not surprised. He's, Makes He's sense. able to, uh, well, he doesn't get into the, the fray of all of the negativity of Hollywood. And this man is yeah. liked by everyone. And when you think of Hollywood, that is almost an impossibility. But he knows you never burn bridges. A person with gravitas is able to stand their ground without burning bridges and still remain likable. And George Clooney is an example of that like no other in Hollywood. Deborah, so I had to, I had to throw in him. Yeah, no, no, you got to throw in Clooney. I love it. I'm, I'm a bit fascinated by what you do for a living and how um, – what that looks like. Can you share just maybe the last um, three months in the life of Deborah and, and tell the audience uh, what, what it is, where you're spending your time and what you're doing? Oh, right. Well, the last three months would include, let's see, where do we want to go first? Let's see, Ohio oh, yeah. State University, the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, the Wynn in Las Vegas, Bellagio in Las Vegas, Key Bank in Cleveland, uh, Safeco Insurance in Seattle, Discover Card in Chicago, U.S. Bank, uh, North Carolina School of Law in Durham, North Carolina. Oh, uh, let me think. Where else? <laughs> the, you Lord have University. A really Let's see. Network and family, because you're on the road all the time. What are you doing? Tell the world what you, what you're up to and what you're passionate about, because. You have literally been doing this for 20, and I'm going to say plus years. I know, you know, being an entrepreneur, I think more of us are becoming that, right, due to the way the world of work is um, becoming borderless. People are finding that there's a lot of opportunity out there to brand yourself and, you know, chart your own course. Tell us about that. Well, for me, it was almost a necessity because when I launched my business, I had reached the glass ceiling, and I was definitely trying to put some cracks and breaks into the glass ceiling without a lot of success. And so I decided, okay, let's just start your own business. And so here I am 20-plus years later. I won't say it's easy, Uh but I will definitely say it has been worth it. So when people say, oh, you work for yourself, life must be easier. I work more hours than I would ever plan if I were working for anyone else. I do too. But I was just going to say, (laughs) it's definitely not less hours. There's no question about no. it. You're always, I mean, you, you know, you're always on in some way thinking about your clients, right? Or your community. Absolutely. Or, you know, something to do next or a new idea. Yes. And it's exciting and it is fun. It is incredibly rewarding. But for me, launching soft skills when people did not even know what soft skills were, Uh, It has been an education process kind of introducing this concept to people and my clients. And my clients, by the way, the clients I've mentioned and the names you have mentioned, I've Mm -hmm. never advertised. So I've never advertised every client I have. No, all through It's all just from hard work and word of mouth. 
and soft skills. I mean, I skills. give you I give you a lot of credit because you know what happens with soft skills, don't you? Sometimes they're seen just like that as soft skills, as something that's not maybe put in a row of importance with some other skills. Have you found that on this journey? I found it primarily 10, 15 years ago. Now clients are clamoring for how do we develop this yeah. in our people, that we are hiring people who are academically and t- they're just brilliant and they're talented, but they don't have people skills. They don't know how to play nice. They, they, don't, they don't have gravitas. They are not taken right. seriously. Right. But yeah. right. So frankly, Megan, I love being more popular than ever. God, look at you. You go. Huh? Well, and why do you think so this it, is? Why do you think more brands are reaching out to you? Why do you think people care more now or are willing to take it seriously? And not only take it seriously, but actually put budget and time and effort behind it. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, and it is unfortunate that not everyone who makes the budget decisions really feels that they need to invest in their people. So it's finding the right connection where someone has bought into the importance of if you hire the best, the only way you're going to keep the best is to continue to develop and reward and motivate and reinforce the best. And so this is part of companies who have a solid brand that also means that they recognize the importance of their brand needs to have gravitas too. Because if a brand takes a hit that they're not trusted any longer, that something about that brand doesn't really ring true, and that comes back even to customer service. So Mm -hmm. all of the differences now companies are realizing the bottom line is impacted by how human their brand is. Mm-hmm. And so that That's human element is That's really right. key. How are you seeing the humanization of brands actually come to life with some of your clients? We'd love to hear some case studies, not just from the win, but some other clients of yours. Well, what I'm discovering is companies have used scripts for so long that they told people what to say and how to say it without entrusting people to truly think on their feet. And when a brand is spoken from the heart and people love where they work, so when there is an issue, when there is a problem with a customer, if that brand allows their people to really have that human-to-human connection, then it's believable. But if things sound scripted, do any of us, are we ever fooled Mm. for a second when we hear a script? No. We know that someone's just Mm -hmm. being told to say that. They don't really mean it, which means they don't really care. And again, Mm -hmm. going back to Gravitas, if you really care, that means you are the real deal. You cannot fake the fact that you care. You either do or you don't. And so Mm -hmm. brands are now succeeding and flourishing when people are invested where they work. They love where they work, and they want to give back. Do you have some examples of brands that you think are living this out? Well, yes, I do. And obviously one that we've already mentioned would be the win, without a doubt. They they live their brand completely from top to toe. I mean, every single department, from housekeeping to the floor maintenance to the people who touch the scuffs up on the walls to their fabulous people who sell, they have a complete holistic brand approach. Discover Card, their commercials are incredibly funny, and they Mm -hmm. also have an excellent brand attitude where they want to stand out from other credit card companies, and they emphasize their human-to-human touch. Safeco, which is part of the Liberty Mutual family, with Safeco, they really reach out with all of their agents, giving more to their people. They actually train some of the people who represent them, the independent agents, So they want people to know we appreciate how you promote our brand. What can we do for you? 
And Coca-Cola is one of my clients. Their, their brand has remained rather consistent. And they have their own department of diplomacy. Mm-hmm. And oh, they okay, do it I diplomatically was very well. You, Deborah, because you're naming a lot of brands and to play devil's advocate for a minute, which frankly probably have large marketing and advertising budgets, who can basically say that they're that type of brand. But how do you really know? And especially to all those people out there who may be looking for a new career path, how do they know about Coca-Cola? How do you know, Deborah, that you want to invest time with brands? Share some wisdom with us. Well, a lot of it for me is because I get to see things from the inside. I really get to the heartbeat of the company. So when I'm brought Mm -hmm. in by an organization, I have certain standards of where I will train and with whom I will work. And I get to the heartbeat rather quickly. So there are clients where that is a notable difference. And I tell people whenever Mm -hmm. they're interviewing for a new position, remember, you're not the only one being interviewed. You need to interview that company to see if they align with you what you stand for, what you represent, because not everyone is going to be a good fit. I train for a lot of different banks, for instance. Key Bank is headquartered in Cleveland. They have a strong community attitude, so they don't just talk Mm, about it. And, yes, they're a larger bank, but they really, they're out there in the community. They do all kinds Mm -hmm. of community events. Yeah. So it's not and just a commercial on TV. Right? At least yes. they're being creative with their budget. People really love that. They love seeing, you know, online videos and content um, from employees now, right? There's no need to hold Absolutely. back because people want to share if they're excited about working somewhere, right? One of the things that you brought up um, in – previous conversations is this whole idea and it's kind of stuck with me about pausing during conversations. Why is that so important in your view of how somebody appears to others? And I I, I just think it's so interesting when we start talking about how, how perception then becomes reality. Pausing shows that you were really listening Pausing, especially when you do it combined with not speaking and your body language is in a pause mode as though you have my full attention. I'm not looking over your head. I'm not looking at my watch. I'm not fidgeting. Pausing lets that person know you value them. And again, with a gravitas impact, When people feel that you're investing in that moment with them, they feel valued by you. They feel elevated by you. They feel certainly respected by you. So you're listening not just to hear so you can speak. You're listening to hear so you are relatable. They know they have been heard. So you repeat back. You let them know what you have heard them say. And when you're able to repeat back in a way that creates that bond, it, again, bumps up your relatability and makes them feel as Mm -hmm. though you truly were investing. That is the communications pro coming out in you, I tell you. I'm going to take that and and bring that with me, and I hope the rest of our audience does for um, the remainder of today and beyond. I want to thank you for stopping by and sharing your insights on this very interesting topic with us. Um, please tell us what you're working on currently and what you've got coming up. I know you've probably got some exciting travels happening. I do. I'm traveling pretty much heading back to Las Vegas and heading to Kansas City and just got back from New Mexico and Denver and a few other places. And wrapping up, I'm trying to take off two or three weeks in a row to finish up my books I have a book Tweet. titled Tweet, Tweetables for Life, and Ooh. it is going to the editor in a few weeks. All yes, right. it is a book of my quotes, and then Reputation Management, Building Your Professional Brand, that is coming out in September, and then the Mini Manners series will be out this fall. So 
I'm trying to take some time away from travel to finish the books, but frankly, Megan, we'll see yeah. how that goes. <laughs> Well, good luck with that. I know how much work that that takes and how much commitment um, you need for that. So, Deborah, thanks for stopping on by, and uh, we will continue this conversation over on Twitter. Take care. I look forward to it. Thanks.